Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. As you can see, I am cutting all four of our bearded dragon's nails today. I've got them quite long so it needed to be done. This is Jemima. Uh, we've had this one the longest actually. She's my favourite. Now, I don't know if you can see that, and I think it's coming up now. I point at one of her toes, which doesn't actually have any nail. And that is where she did a lot of digging and lost them when that she was laying eggs. And this is our latest male bearded dragon, which I didn't show for cutting his nails because he was quite skittish. So, George and I are off to school. Called me today. It's oh, been only... It's been only the second week of schools since March. The second full week of schools since March. How ludicrous for a business that's normally turning work away, left, right, centre. And in these instances, it's actually because the head teachers are sort of nervous about having people in. I think the blame culture we live in, because the schools we are going to, it's very simple, we're abiding by protocol, they're very the happy. That lady's a bit annoying. She knows where we're going. And it either seems that all the schools are very much, no, we don't want to take any risk because it will be my head on the block kind of thing because it's a very divided attitude. Um, obviously, we're abiding by protocol. We're taking our temperatures every morning before we go. Um, for me, it's been, can you just pipe down? For me, it's actually been quite interesting because I haven't got up in the dark for quite some months. So this week we've been getting up in the dark, we've been seeing sunrises all over the UK on our travels left, right, up and down and everywhere we've been this week, all different schools. But on the whole it's been great to get back to school, great to get the children hands on with animals again and see the owls fly and learn a bit about the natural world. So where we have been, we've been happy, teachers are happy, heads are happy, kids are really happy. So let's just see how things progress and we're kind of looking forward to somewhere with a midpoint of next year I think when really hopefully things have calmed down just a little bit because this year has been tough anyway after school because it's only a morning visit we're popping up to the Falkery Centre and we're going to do a little bit of filming about how to train your barn owl because it's a species people buy on a whim they buy them as a pet and unfortunately without any research at all most barn owls suffer so that's another video to check out in the future, but for now, enjoy the rest of the vlog. It's not working. No, I'll twist. So we've been to school today, this morning. Meeting some lovely, really small, like reception age children, which is always good fun and a good giggle. And we're back at Nicholas Falkery now. And we're just gonna put together a short video of how to train your barn owl because it's a species that's very cheap and unfortunately lots of people buy a barn out without giving very much thought to its lifespan and its life at all um, with them whatsoever and there's obviously like everything in life there's the right way or there's good ways of doing things and there's incredibly bad ways and sadly most people buy a barn out with no idea what way they're going to look after that bird or train them. and obviously as always it's the animal that suffers of course if things go wrong
I'm now going to fly the Golden Eagle. I'm just stood having a chat with Marina. Hello. So, it's been a tentative start with Zeus this year. We've had different plans for him, haven't all worked. Now it's the falconry season and it's time to get him out flying properly for falconry. And all I need to do at the moment is just gauge what kind of fitness he's got. We use a rope line to actually help increase his fitness. This is like him going to the gym. And if you look, it's a clearance line here really. It's a four mil line and then it goes up to an eight mil line. Now it's not a heavy line, it just gives the bird enough draw, or the rope drags on the grass just enough that he can't glide all the way there. Most birds of prey will do a few flaps and glide if they're not chasing anything. Gliding's not getting him fit. We want cardio and we want to build muscle back up for his kind of lazy summer life he's had. So the rope line, it's not a heavy rope that he's got to drag along, it just creates enough drag that he has to keep pumping his wings. I'm not going for multiple call-offs today. I just want to see what fitness he's got. So there's a big reward there. Now, people are often shocked that a golden eagle this big will work for rewards and recall. Tiny little rewards. The leg of a day-old cockerel is more than enough to work him on on this kind of exercise. He still realises it's worth it. A little bit of food. The relatively easy exercise he's doing. And we'll combine that with lure runs once we get a bit of fitness to sharpen up, ready for hunting, we've got a big fluffy pillowcase rolled up with cable ties, looks like prey, and we'll do lure runs with a machine or even a person dragging it if we have to, just to sharpen up and get that chasing response. He's getting angsty, let's see if he sees. So he's flying away. He's got a big reward there, and now we're gonna call him back to a small reward. If you've seen our Harrisort videos, you'd have seen me saying, we always hide the food in the glove. I could do that with Zeus, but with Zeus, he doesn't follow on. Every time I call him back, it's after a slip, after he's chased something and missed. So I tend to show him a bit of food because I don't need lots and lots of call-offs when we're out in the field. I just need him to come back. It doesn't matter if he sees the food because there is always a bit of food there. So again, got a bit of control on the clearance line. And any time you're flying a bird on a clearance line, or even an exercise line like this, if the bird is nervous, it might be because the camera woman's close. If the bird's nervous and swerves off his course, you're not just standing there to let the bird come to the end of the line, you're feathering it down gently. Zeus! I'll have to move. Zeus, what we're looking for at this stage isn't just fitness level, it is actually his response. Zeus! Yay. So, what have we seen from this experiment? Well, we've seen he's got good muscle strength, he's flying powerfully, he won't have a lot of stamina at this stage, but he's certainly got enough oomph to go. But we can also see, because the conditions are very still, which actually for him makes life harder. He wants a breeze, he wants to turn into the breeze, take off into the wind, lift himself up in the wind without any real effort. And you can see he was thinking about it, he was eyeing up whether there was a real reward worth coming this way for, he was angling to get on higher ground, all to make his life easier. What I'm looking at for right now is actually a good response. I don't want to be walking four or five hundred yards to find him when he's missed, missed something he's chased downwind and he can't be bothered to fly back to me. And he was very lackadaisical. So he's had enough lunch for today. He's already done a couple of flights before we started filming. And there's no point me going on and just rewarding him for coming and taking his time and being slow. We're looking for a shout, a whistle, wave of the hand, get his attention and him to come eagerly back for that reward. So, all again tomorrow, get that repetition back into his brain, realising that let's crack on and let's get on when I call him. If the weather's not pouring of rain, 
join us tomorrow and we'll see if there's any improvement on that kind of response. Come on, you. So, what we've done for most of our sort of birds that come from hotter climes or more tropical climes is most of them now have got solid roofed aviaries and that means they're not going to get any chance of getting soaked through by a late winter rain and then sit out in a cold all night freezing. Uh, believe it or not, that's what birds do. They're not that clever. They don't realise that in their deep DNA that it's going to get freezing cold here at night and they just think, let's have a shower. So not only for some of those birds like the vultures, which are sensitive to having things like frostbitten toes if you don't look after them and keep them reasonably snug in the winter and dry. We also give them a heat lamp that they can sit under at night and infrared doesn't disturb their sleep particularly, but it does keep them, keep that edge off the really cold nights and the night's gonna be cold. Now what we find sometimes is these lamps here, they move. You use the Edison screw, you screw them in, they work fine. And then a few weeks later, for some reason, they also a little bit loose. They don't work, so we're literally just tightening this one up, put the guard back in, or not. <laughs> oh. I'll show the vault. Simple design. Hello. <laughs> nice. There's probably about half a dozen of our enclosures have infrared heat lamps. And they're the two vultures, the yellow billed kites from Africa and Pedro the Burrowing Owl for sure, he's just small, he doesn't really need it, he keeps dry, but we just spoil him. Have a look at this. Look at that, nothing. That's the back talon of a golden eagle that's gone in about half an inch. Quite painful, but nothing to show. I can't brag about it or say, oh, go, go. Just a piercing wound. That's what happens when you pick up a golden eagle that's coming up to hunting weight and you're wearing an owl glove because you forgot to change your glove. Oh dear. As always, wear and tear, maintenance, lots of paint needing. And again, as we've said before, no chance of doing that this year with the dreaded C word because without the funds to do it, we can't do it. And obviously painting these things is far less important to the birds than their other daily needs. So it doesn't look too good having walled wood here but of course, the money's been spent on bird care, not aesthetics at this moment in time. Now, if you've seen some of our previous vlogs, you will remember this little tortoise that hatched from the egg. And this is just a little update video to see how it's doing and how cute it is. Spot the spotted owl and Crackerjack the white-faced owl in the kitchen. Now they're not cooking anything because they're not that clever, but they're actually getting back in training for some of our school educational visits. It's been incredibly sporadic this year. A thriving business turning work away has been very sporadic due to the C word and owls love habit and routine. And although they've been flowing here and there outside, they actually need retraining and just getting their brains into gear for when we train them and fly them rather indoors in school halls as part of nocturnal animal talks or even owl talks themselves it's funny how an owl's brain works and if it's not doing the same habit and routine regularly it kind of forgets what it's doing so bringing them into an indoor environment even though it's nothing like a school hall and flying them indoors with the dogs running around and all sorts going on it just sort of retrains their brain and lets them realise that, do you know what, this is okay, we know what we're doing, no stress. As weird as a human environment is, I can work in this. And it's strange, there's no children there, nothing like that, and yet a little bit of indoor training and they fly well in their school hall environment. Crazy, crazy things that an owl actually is. Thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe. That way you can check out our weekly vlogs like this one. But if you actually go onto our playlist, you can see there's all kinds of nature-based videos for different age groups and different interests as well. Check them out. See you soon.